So today we are going to talk about my palettes, folks. Honestly, after decluttering, you know, a year or so ago, I got rid of so many. I was like, yeah, I only have like 10 palettes. Then I opened my palette drawer and like actually counted the palettes that I had around the house and in there. And I have like 35, which for me right now is a lot, a lot more. So a declutter is definitely coming soon. This is a video that was created by Ali Glines and Samantha March. It's kind of a tag video where you go through your palettes and talk about the oldest one you have, the newest one, ones that you think are worth the hype, not worth the hype, etc. I also added two more categories that I felt like talking about. So you'll see those at the end. I will link, of course, their videos below. I also saw Kelly Gooch do it, Mandy Leah. I loved their videos, so I can link those. My perspective on a lot of these is a little bit different because I am not pulling from like 100 or 150 palettes like I used to have. So I almost thought I wouldn't be able to do this, but I actually feel strongly about each category and each pick I have. So. I'm drinking out of my probably top five favorite mugs. I have quite a coffee mug collection. <laughs> If I do say so myself, I love coffee mugs. This is one of my absolute favorites, my chip mug. And I'm actually drinking half-calf. I know you guys are so proud of me. My first two cups today, of course, were regular caffeine, normal. But I was like, if I'm gonna go for a third cup, I should probably like cut back on the caffeine just a little bit. I'm so proud of myself. Because I think at a certain point, I just want the feeling of drinking coffee. Whereas I don't necessarily need the third cup of caffeine. I've got this list here. Let's dive in. I've already said that, Jess. Okay. Newest palette in my collection is this M Cosmetics Divine Skies palette. This was Michelle Fawn here on YouTube's new launch of her brand. And I, this might be the only eyeshadow palette they have right now. I love it, you guys. First of all, I think the packaging is unique and pretty. The shimmers are such a beautiful wash of color where it just looks like watercolor. And then the mattes are so perfectly blendable. I use every shade in this palette and I just adore it. It's a, it's definitely a colorway you'll see a couple times in here that I'm really reaching for, kind of the peachy pink shimmery look. I just think is so flattering and pretty on so many people. Definitely my cup of tea and definitely something I've been reaching for like crazy right now. As I have mentioned with this though, the one downside is my chair is turning and I can't stop it. You have to pay for the shipping because you have to order it from their site. So if they're ever having a deal where it's like free shipping or whatever, that would be the time to pounce on this. I did realize a pattern I have with palettes right now, and I've known this, I'm definitely leaning towards a lot smaller of palettes than bigger ones, but I do have some bigger like regular size palettes to mention too, plenty of them. All right, my oldest palette is definitely, okay, not definitely, this was kind of a toss up. I don't keep a lot of old makeup. And there is a part of me that wishes I'd kept like old, old palettes, like my original Wet n Wild Comfort Zone palette I saw Mandy Leah talk about in her video. And I was like, I wish I still had my old ones. So sometimes I do feel nostalgic and wish I had it, but oh well, you know, I don't have them. So probably my oldest is this Violet Voss HG, Holy Grail, that sounded weird to say it that way, Holy Grail palette. It looks like a super reddish palette. I don't really use those, so if you cover those up, it suddenly is a super neutral, natural palette. This I've had for so long, the shadows are just dandy. Everything about the fact that I just described these shadows nonchalantly as just dandy is making me laugh so hard. Why did it roll off my tongue so easily? I probably had it a few years, but I've even spilled coffee on this bad boy, like all over it. Shadows are fine. Like, I don't know how this has withstood this much torture, but it has. I really love, especially this side of the palette. I use all of the shades over there. Again, the shimmers are probably, this might be my favorite shimmer formula. Like they're just perfect. They're not too much and there's not too much glitter. They're not too like thin. It's right in the middle where you can tap it on and it looks gorgeous, but you can blend it. It also looks gorgeous. Like they're just so versatile and beautiful. And this is a palette I've recommended for you. Still stand by, definitely one of my favorites. I feel like I'm talking really I'm realizing I'm trying to go fast. I have a call with like my YouTube partner person and they're gonna walk me through like some of the data on my channel. I'm actually really excited, but it's in like 15 minutes. And I was like, I can get this video done. No, so we're gonna do half. If I look different the second half, it's because I've lived 30 more minutes of my life, I guess. I don't know. I feel like the telltale sign is always the lips. Like an hour after I've applied a lip product, it looks different than the first hour. And why am I diving this deep? Most expensive. This is one I did not buy, so. I always like, should I mention? I'm like, well, it's still in my collection. The Natasha Denona Biba palette. This was sent to me in PR and it is a beautiful palette. However, I really don't use it, you guys. And I, I asked myself, you know, if I didn't have this in PR, would I ever have even bought it? And I know I wouldn't have because I know I use a couple of the shades, like this one I like, some of the shimmers, but I would like to think I would have looked at this on Sephora's site and said to myself, I will not use enough of those colors, especially given the price tag. So 
I think it's good. The quality is there, but I don't know that this is any better. I've said this numerous times with Natasha Denona palettes. I don't know that the quality is any better than like a $40 eyeshadow palette. You know what I mean? And so for over $100 for something like this, I just, I could never say that you guys should spend this amount of money and I don't know that I myself would have ever spent, which is why you don't see me push Natasha Denona palettes on my channel at all. <laughs> but it's not to say that the quality isn't there. And now I love that she's offering like those smaller versions of her palettes. And really, I think that's the way to go if you're dying to try them. I think it's good. I just don't think it's worth the money. There we are. I do like the packaging. I think it's really, really pretty. I've got like junk on it, but. Okay, so on the flip side, my most affordable palette is, I've got a couple. I have my e.l.f. little bite size one. Actually, this is what I'm wearing today, the rose water one. I know you guys have heard me talk about, so I won't spend much time on it, but I, I love this palette. I use especially these three lighter shades. Right now I have this shade on my lid and then the other shimmer kind of tapped in the center. I used this and another shade I'll talk about later in the crease. And then sometimes I'll use this to line my eyes or do the outer corner. $3, fantastic. The only other one I bought was Cream and Sugar and I do like this one as well if you're more into like brownie gold type shades. I think these are really great quality. I, you get a little bit of fallout, but not so much that it's like a deal breaker for me. And I just really like it. And I think the thing that's going to sell anyone on these is if you find a colorway that's perfect for you. Otherwise, you're going to have to reach between a bunch of different palettes. And then it's like, well, you're spending $3, but is it really worth it? But like for me, this colorway is perfect, which is why I love it and recommend it so much. I also have this Wet n Wild little quad in Walking on Eggshells. This is an old favorite of mine, but recently they relaunched them with, well, it was probably a few years ago with a more matte transition shade, whereas before it was just like those three colors in a row. I think for every day, if you're like me and you like just light neutral looks, this is one I totally recommend. There's a reason I have it in my collection again and I still use it. I think it's great. Um, so definitely these are the two least expensive products in my collection. This was the hardest category for me, an everyday palette. And I couldn't decide if I should go the route of like, what is my everyday palette? Or if I should go the route of what is just a general good everyday palette for many people. I went kind of the more general route, although I would say it's a good everyday palette for me, but there is a category in a little bit that's my most used. And so I've reserved that for that. You'll see what I mean. So this is the one I'd recommend for an everyday palette, the ColourPop Going Coconuts palette. It's hyped on YouTube for a reason. I think it's worth the hype. The only shade I don't use is this light, light, almost white shimmer. But the rest of them, I think it's such a good mix because there's warm and cool tones. The shimmers have a little bit of fallout too. They kind of remind me of the e.l.f. shimmers in those palettes, but I just think it is absolutely lovely. Every look I've ever done with this, I've loved and I get compliments on. My favorite shades are definitely these two shimmers here, especially Coco Crush, just all over the lid. And then I really like Culotta and Lovely Bunch in the crease. It's just such a good palette. I think the packaging is cute. The price point is not crazy at all. And I, I, I love this, I recommend it. So now truthfully, the one I struggled with the most was most colorful palette. I don't have colorful palettes. I just don't, I really don't. So this is the one that I was like, I guess I could probably just skip this category for me because y'all know I just don't wear colored eyeshadow. And it's funny, I was thinking in the shower today about that. And I was like, I've over the years I've been on YouTube, I've had so many people say, I wish you do more colorful looks. And I could see myself doing a video where I'm like intentionally trying a look that's out of my comfort zone that I could see myself doing. But generally in my life, that's just not what I do. And I'm like, it seems silly to me to force myself to do that all of the time for videos when it's not what I'm comfortable with. I'm not a makeup artist and I don't like it on myself. And there are 10 million YouTubers that are really good at that. So it's like, if you're really wanting that, Go check them out, you know? It's just not my niche, if you will. So, wow, getting off my high horse there. The Wanderess Escape Palette from Wander Beauty. I'm gonna be honest, I have barely used this. The blue is like the most colorful I have. It is a really pretty shade of blue. And I do think that the mattes in this are really nice. Like they're very blendable and soft. The shimmers are very, very pretty. Uh, and I don't get as much fallout with these as I do others. However, some of them have suspended glitter and you do get a little bit of glitter on your face, but it's a really pretty palette. I like that this is a neutral palette with those little bits of color, like a little bit of purpley and a little bit of blue, but it's not crazy, which is why it's the most colorful palette I have in my collection. Okay, smallest palettes, definitely these e.l.f. ones. We don't need to talk about them more, but these are definitely my smallest ones, which I love. I love that they're these little bite-sized, pocket-sized little things. I think they're so cute. And they definitely remind me so much of when e.l.f. was first launching years ago, and so many of their 
products were just a dollar and they were in like the little cheap white packaging just like this. That's what it reminds me of. My biggest palette is definitely the Tati Beauty palette. I used to have the Jaclyn Hill palette and I decluttered it. Um, this one also might be my heaviest palette. I don't think I'd ever realized how heavy this was. I like this palette. I don't find myself reaching for it much because I don't dip into the glitter glitter much. I do like the metallics and the sequin. Like I've enjoyed using the sequin shade wet on the lid and just pressing it on. I think it's a really pretty look. So I think there's nothing wrong with the palette. I just, I know what I like and it's usually these smaller palettes with this curated collection and that's what I end up reaching for. But I do think it is nice. If you like having the mix of the different textures, this would be a palette for you because it definitely has that mix. And I think, I do think it's a unique idea. I think it'd be cool if Tati in the future came out with like smaller quads. I would, I could really get on board with some quads. Okay, best memory is this NARS palette in suede. This, uh, wow, I took with me, I've just traveled with this so much, you guys. And it, I think for that reason, it's all of these memories of just travel with our toddler and with my husband. And then we've also went, the main thing I think about with this palette is, this is what I brought on my Alaskan cruise with our best friends. And so it was just such a happy trip and such a happy memory. I actually did a get ready with me video in Alaska. I can link it above and below. And literally I'm on the cruise ship, like on our balcony and you can see glaciers behind me. It is the most peaceful, serene filming location I've ever had. So definitely check it out, even if you just watch a minute of it. But I use this in it and I just adore this palette so much. Like I could never, I don't think I could ever, ever get rid of it. So one that is worth the hype and it didn't used to have hype, but I do think now in the YouTube sphere, it does have a bit of hype. The Persona Identity Palette. It's been out for a while. I think you can buy it at Ulta. I've had it for a while and I, I used to use it all the time. I haven't used it in a while. Planning for this video, I'm like, I wanna put this in my vanity and use it some more. It is such a good palette. The shimmers and the mattes are perfect. They blend super well. The shimmers that perfect where they're not super heavy, they're blendable, but they can look really, really nice and shimmer if you want them to be. You don't ever have to use them wet because they just look gorgeous on their own. I just love this. I think it's such a good mix of colors. The only complaint I've ever had with this palette is that I wish there was one more matte shade a little bit lighter than this because that's always what I feel like I'm reaching out to another palette for when I use this. But beyond that, I just think it's so good and it's gotten hype here and there and I think it's worth it. Now, I know they have a volume two. I remember looking at the colorway of that and feeling like, I don't think, it's a little bit more colorful. So shocker, I was like, I don't think I'd use it enough to buy it, but I think this is such a great formula. I definitely wanna try the Persona blushes they have out. Nicole Renee always gets me to want those, man. I just need to like buy one. T-O, I will BRB. You'll never know I was gone. Okay, we're back. How do my lips look? <laughs> so uh, what is our next category? Next is, oh, what's not worth the hype? Okay, I have two. First of all, this Too Faced Natural Nudes. Now, this is still pretty new. So the hype on it, part of it is that it's super new. And I've heard some people that love this. I don't fully understand it though, because the colorway is beautiful. I absolutely love it. The shimmers are just like, chunky and like kind of skippy. The, I, I feel like the first time I talked about this in a video about not liking it, I think it was my speed reviews, I didn't explain myself well. I feel like the shimmers themselves are just, there. it's not the normal, look at that. Where was that? Was that even the one? It's just not the normal shimmer formula. It's just like subpar. And like, if you start comparing this to like the Too Faced Chocolate Bar palette, I loved the shimmers in that and I loved the mattes. Like I loved those palettes. This is not the same formula, I'm telling you. It's just not, and it's still expensive for what it is. So this is one that I don't think is worth the hype. And I'm so sad to say that because I absolutely adore the colorway. But the other one I wanted to mention is just generally the Kylie Jenner palette. This one is her, yeah, it says nowhere on here what this palette actually is called, which is very bizarre to me. I bought this at Ulta on a whim, wish I hadn't. I don't think this is a bad palette, but it's just one of those that I feel like this quality is the same as ColourPop quality. So why am I paying so much more for this when I can get the exact same thing from ColourPop for cheaper? You know what I mean? That's, that's how I feel. I find myself not reaching for it. The colorway again is kind of bland, I know to most, but it's up my alley. I mean, these are the kinds of shades I like, but I just felt like the shimmers were, again, just kind of okay, right? That's, you can barely even see it. The mattes were fine, they blend fine, but I just think the price point isn't fair for what you're getting. And I just 
for that reason, I feel like it's not worth the hype. I would never buy another Kylie Jenner palette. Favorite palette from a favorite brand is the next category. And I picked this one. Elf is a brand that I've loved for years and it's cool that they're releasing great makeup for a reasonable price. And this palette of theirs is a favorite of mine. I, I use it all the time. I discovered it within the past year. I think it's a newer-ish palette. But I just think it's got such a good mix of neutrals and you've got a good mix of shimmers and mattes. The quality is there. I actually used Truffle in my crease today. I used this actually in another recent video. I think my coffee chat get ready with me. I just think it's a really good palette, you guys. I, I genuinely do. I think the quality is nice. The price point is fair. It's a good mix. And I find myself reaching for this all of the time over so many other palettes that I have, including high-end ones. And I feel like for me, that tells the whole story. I'm using this on my own, reaching for it over other expensive palettes. Now the next category is most used palette. And I had to go with this Charlotte Tilbury quad. This is the only shadow palette or quad, whatever you wanna call it, that I've actually hit pan on in years, years, guys. I love it. So this is the Pillow Talk quad, not the one that's like Pillow Talk pops where it's all shimmer. This has two mattes, a shimmer, and then like a slightly glittery kind of top coat of a shadow. I use every shade in here. I'll take this shimmer and put it all from like my brow bone, all just literally everywhere. And then I'll use these mattes kind of in the crease and then I'll top it, I'll tap the glitter on top. Every time I wear this on my eyes, I get so many compliments. It's to the point where if I'm just getting ready without thinking, I'm grabbing this and doing the same look every day. It is my absolute favorite. I think if you have a deeper skin tone, these aren't gonna show up on you well. I don't think you'll be surprised given you know looking at the colors I'm using. But if you are near my skin tone, I love this. And I'm saying that as someone that I've had another Charlotte Tilbury quad that I hated that I got rid of. But there's something special about this one, man. So that's one I could see myself buying again as I use all of those shades up. So the two extra categories that I wanna personally add to this, cause I think it's fun, is what do I think is underrated? Okay, an underrated palette. And I'm even considering this underrated in my own collection. Like I feel like I don't give it enough love, but it deserves more love. And that is the Urban Decay Naked Honey palette. I've had this for a while and you'll see I haven't used it a ton, but every time I do use it, I'm reminded of how good it is. It's kind of a unique colorway in that, yeah, it's a neutral palette, but it has these kind of unique kind of greenish gold colors, but it's got some browns. It's got a good mix of shimmers and mattes. I think the quality is really nice. Sometimes Urban Decay's palettes nowadays can not be totally hit or miss, but I feel like some are better than others. And I think this one is really good. I'm calling it underrated. I need to show this more love in my own collection. I think I just said that. Did I think it or did I say it out loud? And all of the looks I've gotten with this are just pretty and they blend seamlessly together. It's the only Urban Decay palette I still have and I really, really like it. And the next, the last category I wanted to mention is what is a palette that I love that is no longer available? So obviously this is just fun to hear about, I guess, but you can't get your hands on it. And that would be this darn little MAC palette. It was a limited edition. It was like their cherry bloom or something line that they had. And these shadows are the best MAC shadows I've ever tried. There's something special about these shimmers here, this row, that, oh my gosh, like, oh my gosh, they're just so good. They're again, totally up my alley, but they're creamy and there's not really much fallout. And then the mattes are gorgeous. Like I use this when I travel all of the time. I use it in my own life all the time. Obviously you don't see me use it in videos cause you can't get your hands on it. And even the shades, I don't know that any of these shades are available. You know what I mean? So that is the video. All right, I hope you enjoyed it. What are your picks for each of these categories? Tag me on Instagram if you do a post. You can just put it in the comments below, some of your picks. This could be fun to do for other categories too. You know, doing this for blushes, would that work? Newest, oldest, most expensive, most affordable, yeah. I don't know if I have enough blushes to do that, but this could be fun to do with other categories, right? Like with lip products maybe. So let me know if you'd be interested in that. I mean, it's kind of a fun way to show a lot of your collection, but in a more unique, different way. So if you'd be interested in me doing maybe lip products, maybe cheek products, and just doing a mix of bronzers, highlighters, and blushes, and it doesn't require buying more makeup, because I certainly don't need to be buying a ton of more makeup all the time, 
So let me know by giving it a thumbs up if you'd like that. If you want to binge some of my videos, I can link some of my favorites up in the eye and down below as I always do. I link my most binge worthy playlist. If you're new to my channel, I do all kinds of videos, not just makeup. I'd love to have you subscribe. And in the meantime, I'd love to say hi on social media. It is at It's Jessica Braun, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye. Ow.